Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. It's me, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, hey, what's up? It's me, Colin Atrophy Hagendorf, the Slice Harvester. Uh, here again at my favorite pizzeria in Manhattan, Pizza Suprema. My picture is on the wall of a pizzeria, okay? Do you know what that means? To be a New Yorker and end up with your picture on the wall of a, This has been my dream since I was like five years old. We're here this week uh, with my friend Marissa Paternoster, the uh, tiny shredder in Screaming Females. I don't know if I want to call her a tiny shredder. I, I do like calling her a tiny shredder. Maybe I, sh I don't think she'd be mad. It's just, it's amazing the trajectory they've had and it's amazing the way that they approach making music. I feel like it's not confined by genre and I feel like they're really willing to take musical risks. I am a pizza critic, not a music writer, so you just look at the clip and then buy the record because it's so good. When was the last time you had a whole pie brought to you at a table? Um, only when I'm hanging out with my parents, probably. How, when did you start playing music? There was an after school club at my Catholic school called, <laughs> very inventive name, Music Club. <laughs> and so uh, the moderator was like this math teacher at uh, Brazil Catholic and he just kind of like would have kids come, come over after school on Tuesdays and we just play together. Cool. And, that was it. and that's like how Mike and I became friends. What was your first band? My first band was called Surgery on TV. Surgery on TV? <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> with, with Mike and uh, two other like neighborhood kids. And we all had like really disparate influences and didn't last very long. The desperation of just finding people that also want to do Yeah, you're cool just like, stuff. whatever, you you're young, yeah, you're just like, <laughs> yeah, who you're cares? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You remember any of the songs from uh, Surgery on TV? Mm -hmm. Give me some names. One was called Sports, and all of the lines are from the movie A League of Their Own, <laughs> which is a really good movie. Yeah, I know, it's great. Yeah, and then... Did you write that? Sports? Yeah. Or A League of Their Own? The song, <laughs> Sports. Yeah. You're I a wrote genius. the song called Sports. But I remember during a song that you guys were playing and thinking like, it sounds like fucking Prince. Like, I don't remember what song it was, but you know like the like hard rockin', like kind of funkier Prince songs yeah, where it's when just- Yeah, Prince really lets it rip. Yeah. Which is what everyone wants him to do, but he just refuses. He won't do it. Why won't it. he just do that all the time? Because but he you knows do you it. want it. You're doing it. Yeah, and that let's not compare rules. me to Prince. I just did. I'm sorry. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, did you come into the city when you were in high school to go to shows like from Jersey? There were a couple of times where I think like, I, I, I probably came in with uh, Mike or some other friend to see like the Slater Kinney or bigger shows. I mm -hmm. never, I never had the opportunity to go to punk shows. I didn't know where they were. I didn't know how to find out about them. Like, and even if I had, I don't think I would have had the courage to like go into a place like that. It was like very scary. And then yeah. even when I finally did in New Brunswick, like started going to house shows, I was like completely overwhelmed with anxiety because I was just like, these people are like so cool and I want to be cool like sure. that, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, so New Brunswick is famous for a certain regional greasy food, right? Yeah. There's the grease trucks. Yeah. Tell me about the grease trucks. <clears throat> uh, when I went to Rutgers, which was eons ago, uh, the grease trucks were kind of like a meeting place for a really scary, drunk, like, heterosexual white men. <laughs> it was where they would come to meet to usually eat and then maybe beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> it all depended how the night was going. Anyway, a lot of punks did want to frequent the grease trucks because they are kind of delicious if you are blackout drunk. Play the show, you're hungry, there's nothing open. You can only go to the bodega or whatever is the late night food spot in your neighborhood. You gotta get something salty, something sweet, and a drink. Yeah. What are you gonna get? Okay, so I thought about this, and oftentimes when we play in New York, we'll just go back to New Jersey, and I will stay with my dad, because sure. it's very, very close, and there's a room and a bed and stuff or whatever. And, but I also think that when I, get home to my father's house from shows, what I eat is like the saddest 
because I will like open the fridge <laughs> and sit on the ground and like just like look at everything that's in a Tupperware and then just like take it out in front of the fridge with the door open and just like open it and just like eat it with my hands. I really hope he doesn't see this, but he probably knows. What kind of things are we talking? Just like random pieces of pasta, like spaghetti, like just, yeah, just with nothing on it. Oh, just like it. totally like spaghetti with nothing on it, just like, ah, yeah. you know? And that'll be like my salty treat. And then like, maybe I'll look through the cupboard and find like four raw walnuts or something. I'm like, yeah, whatever, and put those in there. But the real treat is that my stepmom is a real affinity for gelato lately, which has been <laughs> changing my life. Because when I open up the freezer, there is just this wealth of variety of gelato flavors. This reminds me of like doubling up on some super plus pads in high school and wearing one, basically wearing a diaper. Just so I could get through the whole day without bleeding on my seat in religion class.